Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Now, I made an earlier video on WebGL and it used only the native APIs available in the browser. And in practice, I don't really use those APIs. I tend to use abstraction libraries that kind of make, thing, make all those little, little mundane, difficult things a lot easier to do. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about StackGL, which is basically a collection of those small abstraction libraries. And they're really great because they let you do all that powerful stuff with all those native API stuff, but they don't, and then they don't hide away too much of, of all of that, but they do make it a lot easier to just build, you know, some WebGL stuff. We want to do WebGL now. So we're going to go over to our terminal and we're going to install with NPM a package called gl-now and save that to our package dependencies. Now we can go over into our code after we start up our development server here. And we can use that and create a shell. So we'll say const shell equals require uh, gl now. And then that gives us a function that we're just going to call. And that will give us a shell or a, a WebGL context that's all ready to go. And so every game or WebGL thing needs at least two things, initialization and a render. And gl now will give us both of those. So we can say shell on gl init. This is, we'll, this is where we're going to do all of our initialization stuff in, within this function here. Um, and then we have another event uh, called gl uh, render. And so every time we need to render, we're going to do all that here. Now the shell will give us access to the raw gl context. And since we're going to be using that um, a lot, I'm just going to go ahead and create a variable within each of these uh, that just calls it GL. Just because we're going to be using this variable a lot, it'd be a lot easier just to type it uh, GL instead of shell.gl. Okay, so now that we have access to WebGL, we need to tell WebGL how to draw the things on the page. And so we're going to do that with a shader. Um, so we're going to do npm install gl-shader and save that to our package dependencies. Let's start up our dev server here again. And we'll require a function to create a shader here. So let's say create shader, uh, require gl shader. So now in our init function, we can create a shader here. So we'll say shader equals create shader. And the first thing it wants is the context to WebGL. So we'll pass in this GL variable. Then the first, uh, the, the second parameter that it wants is going to be our vertex shader. And so this shader tells WebGL about where all the vertices or all the shapes that you want to draw. Um, and they're going to usually be triangles. So now everything within this string is going to be using a different language than JavaScript. It's going to be using a language called GLSL. And it looks very similar to C in JavaScript, but it is its own language. So every GSL program has a main function. So we're going to create this main function. And in order to pass or tell that what the, the shape looks like, we need to give it, we need to assign this variable called gl underscore position. And this gives, um, this, this tells where all the, the vertices and the points are so it can start to draw the shapes. And so what this is going to accept is a, a vector four. So it needs four points on where to put these things. So we don't actually want to describe our shapes in GLSL. We actually want to describe them in JavaScript. So what we need to do is we need to provide a attribute or it's a way that we can feed in a buffer or an array of data um, that feeds all these, vert vert these bleh, vertice points. And so we're going to create an attribute here and it's going to be a vector two, so two vectors. And we're just going to name it position here. So then what we can do is we can provide, um, this is going to be, this requires a, whoops, we need an equal sign there. This needs to be four vectors. So the first two vectors we're going to give it are going to be just a position here. And then this, the, the third vector, such as if you're doing 3D, we can just uh, describe this as zero. And then the last vector we'll just do uh, 1.0. So you may be thinking, wait a minute, this is a vector four. How come there's only three vectors being passed to it? Well, GLSL uh, is really clever in that it can it knows that this position here is a vector two. So it, instead of having to do position dot x and then position dot y to feed in four vectors, you can just simply pass in this vector two, and it will automatically figure out that these are the first two parameters you're trying to pass in. Pretty cool, huh? So the next thing we need to describe is the color of things. We've already described where all the vertices go. Now we need to describe of what color they should be. And so we do that with another uh, program here. So we'll say void main. And instead of gl underscore position, because uh, we're not specifying vertices, what we're specifying is color, we're going to use a, param or a, a, a variable called gl underscore frag color. 
And this is a VEC4 that we're gonna describe what color it is. So now the four vectors are gonna be, is gonna be, uh, the first one's gonna be red, uh, which we're gonna give it zero. And the second one's gonna be green. And the third one's gonna be blue. And the last one's gonna be the opacity that it is. So right here, you see I described a black color. But if I change this to one, you'll see that I described now a red color. Or if I change this last one here, you can see that I now have created a blue color. So for the purpose of, of this video, we're just gonna paint everything that we draw to the screen in black, in opaque black. All right, so now that we've told WebGL how to draw and paint things, we have to give it something to draw and paint. And so to do that, we're gonna need to create a buffer here. So I'm gonna npm install uh, a library called gl under, or gl-buffer and save that to my package.json. Start my dev server back up here again. Go on over here and um, instead of create shader, we're gonna do create buffer and require gl-buffer. All right, let's head on down here to our initialization function because we're gonna initialize a buffer here. So we'll say buffer equals create buffer. And the first parameter is gonna be the context to WebGL. And the second parameter is going to be our vertices or all the, the different vectors that are gonna describe the shape that we wanna draw. So I'm gonna enter some numbers in and they may seem like magic code, um, but I'll explain in a brief moment here. So the first vertice we're gonna do is at 0.0x and 0.5. And then the next one is gonna be negative 0.5 and uh, at the y, uh, negative 0 0.5. And then the last one, because we're gonna draw a triangle, uh, we're only doing three vertices, is gonna be at that and that. And there, we now we have a buffer to describe the shape that we wanna draw. So you may have noticed that I haven't been putting const in front of the, um, the variables I'm creating here. And that's because I want these to actually exist up here, uh, out, uh, hoisted up into this scope. Because what I wanna do is then when we were ready to draw, which we're ready to draw now, I want to have them available here in this function here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and create uh, these variables up here. So let's say let shader, let buffer, and now they're available uh, throughout our entire uh, program. So let's go ahead and draw these. Um, so let's go down here to our render function, uh, our render event. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to use the shader that we created. We wanna use this, this shader. Um, so we're gonna say, let's bind that shader. Now we also want to use this buffer. So we're gonna say buffer bind. These are the two things we wanna do. We wanna, we wanna use these to, to do our draw, our next draw. Now this buffer, what we wanna do is we wanna feed it to this position attribute that we did. We want to give GL position all of these, uh, um, these X, Y coordinates to let it know how to draw our shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, shader uh, attributes. These are all the different attributes that are on our shader. Uh, we want the position attribute and we want to point it to, we wanna point the buffer to that attribute. Now finally, we're ready. Now that we, we, we set up our shader, we set up our buffer, we pointed the buffer to our attribute, we're finally ready to draw. And that's always just one function that you call. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call draw arrays. GL draw arrays, with plural. And then these are gonna be triangles. So we'll say G under, uh, GL dot, dot triangles, triangles, like that. Um, and then we're gonna start at zero because we wanna start at the beginning of our buffer and then we only have three vertices. So we're just gonna draw those three vertices. All right, moment of truth, go over to our uh, page and you can see we drew a black panda nose. Um, I yeah, bet you thought it was going to be a triangle but it's actually we've been drawing this entire time a, a panda nose. Okay, back to our buffer though. If you look at, we're, we're only drawing in right now with X and Y coordinates. So basically in 2D, um, up here in our vector position, um, the, the third dimension here is, is always just being zero. So what you can think of is you can divide the entire screen up into uh, four quadrants where you have um, uh, negative one on the X axis and positive one on the Y axis way up here in the corner and then right in the middle uh, here is going to be um, zero on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis and then all the way down here on the other side That's going to be positive one on the x-axis and um, Negative one on the y-axis. So if we want to play with that 
we have this first vertice here. So this right now, it's saying that it's zero on the x-axis and halfway up the screen on the y-axis. So if we wanted to change this to, let's say, negative one, uh, and then maybe change this over to one to go all the way up the screen, you could see that's gonna put that in the top left corner. And then if we change this x value to one, it's gonna shoot it all the way over here to the other side of the corner. Or if we want to change the y value here to negative one, you can see it's gonna shoot that, that vertice all the way down to the bottom corner there. But that doesn't look anything like a panda bear nose, so we're gonna change this back to our original coordinates here. So pop quiz, you want to draw in 3D now, not 2D. How would you do that? Well, we need three vectors. Um, and so what we can do is we can change this buffer to and give it a third vector here. So we'll just add zero onto the end of each of these uh, 2D vectors. Now, we no longer want to do a vec2, we actually want a vec3. And since our position is already here, we can just take off this vector. And now, since our position is now a vector, a three vector, a vec three, um, it will complete this vec four position, and we get the exact same black triangle. I mean, no, I mean panda bear nose, panda bear nose. So panda bear nose that sits still is kind of boring. Uh, it really should be rotating and scaling and translating, moving around the page and all that. But in order to do that, we're gonna need to start a 12 part series on linear algebra uh, and lots of matrix multiplication in order just to know how to move a little triangle around the screen. Or we can forget about all that and just use a library. But if you're really interested in linear algebra, because it's, it's actually really cool stuff to learn, uh, then check out this three blue, one brown series on it. It's a really great series on linear algebra. But we're going to skip all that matrix math and we're just going to install a library called glmat4 because we want a 4x4 four four matrix uh, math stuff to do. So matrices are really good at uh, moving things, moving uh, vectors around. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use that mat4 library. So we'll say require glmat4. And so what we need to do is we need to create a, a matrix model that basically says, yeah, draw that triangle, but let's first move it and scale it and do all this math to it first before drawing all of these uh, vertices that we specified here. So let's go down here and into our render and create this model here. And we'll say mat for create to create this uh, four by four matrix. Now we need to feed this matrix into our shader. So we're gonna create what's called a uniform. Now, a uniform is different than an attribute because the, where the attribute, you're specifying uh, data for each vertex on the screen, uh, the uniform applies to all the vertices. And so this, this model, when we draw all these vertices, we only need one model at a time. We don't need it per vertex. So um, we can specify this uniform, and it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix here, and it's going to have the name model. So then back down into our render function, we can specify uh, that this we want to use this, um, this 4x4 matrix that we've created here. So we're going to say uh, shader uniforms, uh, uniforms, and we've named it model. We're going to bind uh, this model, this, this matrix that we created here into this model uniform. So the last thing we need to do to connect it up is we need to apply it to the position here. So now that we have access to this four by four matrix, we need to apply it to this position. And this is why matrix math is really awesome for vectors because all we have to do is just multiply this four by four matrix by our vec four position of all of our, uh, all of our vertices and it just magically figures it all out through power of math. Okay, let's try and move it around this uh, triangle here with our model that we have available now. And so to do that, we can use the mat for library and moving um, uses a word called translate. Uh, and what we do is we want to specify which which matrix we want to apply it to is the first uh, parameter. And uh, this, the second parameter is the starting matrix that we're working with. So we're just going to supply the model twice there. And now we're going to specify three coordinates and which way we want to move it. So we want to move it uh, 0.3 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction. 
And now if you go over to our page, you can see that our uh, panda bear nose has moved slightly to the side here. And we can maybe make it move the other way by saying negative 0.3 and it goes up there. And maybe we want to make it move up a little bit. So we'll say 0 0.3 and it'll go up a little bit. Or we want to go all the way up. We can say 1. It's going to go off the screen. 1.5. See you later, panda bear nose. So besides moving, what we can do is we can um, also rotate. So we'll say mat4 rotate, and we're going to specify the, the model, the, the matrix we want to end up with, and the entry one here. And then what we're, we're going to do is we're going to specify the degrees uh, that we want to rotate it. So I'm going to say 45 degrees. And then we have to specify the axis in which we want to rotate it. And so I want to rotate it here in the Z direction here, and you can see that it rotates our, our triangle, our, our buffer. And then the last one we can do is uh, mat4, and we can scale it. And so it's going to take the same parameters. So we say model, model. And then we specify the, the, the XYZ direction that we want to scale. So this would just equal the exact same size it would be. And then maybe we want to scale it up by 2 in the X and Y. And you can now see it gets bigger. Or if we do 0.5. Uh, 0.5 and now it gets half the size. Now see I told you linear algebra is really cool, huh? Moving our drawings on the screen is really cool, but we also want to move the person looking at it. We want to move ourselves. So what we're going to need to do is create a camera. And what's cool about this is that we can create a camera using the same matrix magic we've been using this entire time. So let's go ahead and create a camera and look at that. It's another 4x4 four four matrix. Now this matrix is going to be a little different. What we're going to use is a perspective transform here. So we'll say pers perspective, if I can spell that correctly. And the first parameter is the one we're going to apply it to. Now what we're describing here is we're just, we're, we're, think about in a 3D space, you're describing a box. And it's going to be kind of like a distorted box. But this box is going to say, this is our viewpoint of what we want to look at. So everything within this box is what we want to actually look at. So what we have to do is we have to tell this 4x4 matrix what this box looks like. So the first parameter we're going to specify is the field of view. And so to do that, we'll just say 40 time, 45 times math pi and divided by 180 to change that degrees into radians. And the next thing we need to do is specify the aspect ratio. Luckily, Shell gives us the width and height of the canvas element that it's drawing on the screen. So we can just simply say uh, Shell width uh, divided by the Shell height to get the aspect ratio. The next thing is the wall that's closest to us. Um, we don't want to draw anything you know, on the other side of that wall because we're not going to see it. So we just got to give it a number of what is the closest thing. And then we have to specify what is the farthest thing. And so I'm just making these numbers up. 0 0.1 seems pretty close and 1,000 seems pretty far. But you need to adjust it as needed to uh, draw the, the objects that you're hoping to draw. Or rather, have the camera see the objects you're hoping it to see. Cool. So now let's hook up this camera to our shader. So we're going to say shader uniforms. Um, we'll call this camera and bind it to camera. And then we'll go up to our shader here and we'll create a uniform for our camera. That's also a, uh, a, a four by four matrix. And then through the power of matrix multiplication, all we simply have to do to apply this camera is multiply it by all of these things. So now when we save our application, you can see that our panda bear nose has disappeared. And that's because now our camera is looking at a specific position that it no longer sees that, that panda bear nose. So what we have to do is we have to move our camera back a little bit in order to uh, continue seeing those things. So we can do that with matrix multiplication. So we can say translate. We're going to move this camera around. So camera, camera. And what we want to do is we want to move this camera back a little bit in the Z direction, you know, the one pointing directly into the screen. So we're going to say move it back uh, to in the Z direction so we can see that panda bear nose once again. Uh, or maybe it's, you know, you want to move further away from it. Or maybe you want to move closer to it. Uh, you can move this camera around now using the same uh, matrix, that 4x4 magical matrix linear algebra goodness that uh, makes all these vectors beautiful. So I hope you have enjoyed drawing a panda bear nose. And if you have, then help others draw panda bear noses by sharing this video. And if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.